Good morning everybody. Um, well, a lot of you know me, I guess. Uh, except maybe for the people online looking and wondering who the fuck is this guy. Uh, so for them I'll make my introduction a little more elaborate than I would normally do for you. Sorry. Um, and yeah, I've got the microphone right here. So online I'm, um, they can hear me. Oh, so I should, I should do this as well. Yeah. Okay, I've got a backup system. I've got two mics now. Okay, well, sure, no problem. Um, so like I said, um, for the people online, I will do a slightly longer introduction than I would normally do for a lot of you folks who know me. Um, and the other thing is, normally I like to make a, a, a do a talk about Linux and the progress that's made or the wonderful things that's de that are developing and um, with some jokes etc. The, the problem is this is not going to be a nice talk uh, because I'm scared and uh, after this talk maybe you're scared too which means I would have done my job right. Uh, sorry for that. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you then feel a little impressed, I've done my job again, as I should. Okay, so, the title, Why We're All Going to Shit in 30 Years Due to Computers. And if it's not for computers, then there are several other reasons why we're going to shit. One of them, of course, is the new president of the United States. But that's a whole different topic. So, who am I? My name is Jeroen Pater. Uh, Jeroen works fine too in, uh, in English. Uh, uh, language and uh, Jeroen in France is uh, no problem as well. Um, I've spent my lifetime doing IT innovation. Uh, well, life up till now and I hope to be to get very old, so uh, yeah, lifetime until now. Um, I call myself an IT solutionist. Uh, I provide solutions for problems uh, that can be project management, can be software development, can be whatever. Um, but that's basically what I do. If you don't have a problem, go see somebody else. Um, in pictures, who am I? Well, um, I have a, a, a large uh, van uh, with a penguin on the side. That's a birthday gift from my lovely wife. Um, and it's also a wheelchair, a car uh, uh, fitted to transport somebody in a wheelchair. So we've got somebody in a wheelchair in our family. Um, I'm also active in uh, uh, the Boy Scout movement, boy and girl of course, boy and girl scout movement, where we do something called the disaster camp and there I am a firefighter instructor to the kids and telling them what to do when your house is on, on, on fire and how to get out safe. Um, that brings me to the picture down on the bottom where you see me rescuing a dog that was swimming and a dog swimming, rescuing, why would you do that? Well, it was midwinter, the lake was completely frozen except for this one melted spot in the middle where he was happily swimming until he tried to get out and well, you know, hypothermia, at some point he would go to the bottom, well, we saved him, but he was a little cold. Um, and the helmet on the right side is, well, as a firefighter, it can get pretty hot and if you look at the the, 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 the visor, then you see in the middle down, it's, it's melted. So it was a little hot uh, where I was. Okay. And now I'm going to go into a different mode, which is uh, pretty unusual for me, but I'm going to do my modest mode off, just to make sure you get the message. So, I did predict open source and Linux back in 2001. I don't have to tell you now where we stand with Linux. You know, it's on every Android phone, it's on, on numerous servers, etc., embedded systems. It's almost a de facto standards in some markets. We, we've, we've arrived in some way and still there's a lot to do. But I predicted that. I also predicted the law on open standards in 2001 in my column in Linux News. That was later uh, a government proposal by uh, Kees Vendrick which was adopted by the second chair, which um, made sure there were some initiatives like OSOS and OEV. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, Astrid Oseberg, also a uh, second chamber member, um, got a, 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 a bill passed that it should become law that uh, Dutch government should use open standards in the communication everywhere. So it's not, not something that they it would be nice if they don't. Nay, it's, it's going to become the law. 
which is pretty cool. Okay, so and now I will predict future. And there's no ifs or buts about it, I will predict the future. I done it again, I did, did it before, I'm going to do it again. Uh, let's first start with some examples. Now, here you see two pictures of a cute car. Eh? The Tesla, who doesn't want to drive a Tesla, right? No gas in it. Um, oh, okay, some exceptions are there, so <laughs> I can see. Um, I would like to drive a Tesla. I mean, it's uh, electric, it, um, it can burn rubber if you want to. Um, and it does some self-driving and the Google car also. Um, so, yeah, seems pretty good. Except when you are a truck driver. Because if you, ever got, if you can build an autonomous car, you can also build an autonomous truck. Which doesn't need to drive 8 hours a day, but can, can drive 24 hours a day. And completely autonomous, maybe in a slower speed, but still uh, pretty autonom autonomous. You don't need any truck drivers. Uh, which means in the Netherlands, 50, 56,000 people will lose their job. Um, maybe you like games. Huh? Uh, it started, this, this revolution started with the uh, Nintendo Wii, which was very fun and very interactive, which made Microsoft think about uh, uh, interactive games, which made them develop the Kinect, and the Kinect made a robot developer think about interactivity and they built this robot. This is a very cheap robot and you don't need to program it very complex. You can just move its arms and say you've got to pick up somewhere around here and there's a camera on the arm so he will zoom in on what he needs to grab and you can say and then you've got to move like this or you've got to do that. And um, as you can see in the picture, um, He's, got even, he's even got eyes, and it's of course not for the software, but that's for you, because there's also a camera in there, and you can talk to the robot. You can, you can say what you want. And, and he, he looks around. This, this, this uh, camera can, can uh, rotate and look at both arms uh, or separately and just go ahead and do its job. Which means robots are becoming uh, cheap to use, cheap to buy, and there's a very big chance, very big, that it's, it's going to uh, have a good business case for, for companies. Um, there are even robots helping out uh, with people who have a mental disability. Um, effect, healthcare professionals reduced, well, you can spend, uh, first it starts with, they can spend time on, on uh, more interactive tasks. But in the end, it's a matter of efficiency and, 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 and um, the, the, the checks and balances in a company. Uh, machine workers are reduced because you can replace them with a robot. Hmm. Maybe you think about barcodes. Well, we've got barcodes everywhere. Do we use them? Yeah, you could. In a self-checkout lane, which means you don't need a cashier anymore at the supermarket. And again, with the very thin margins of supermarkets, this is a very tempting business case. And you put a camera on top and you say, well, we video everybody. You don't know if they're, video, if they're looking at you, but would you take a chance and not scan a product on the off chance that you will get caught as a thief? Probably not. So just by that, you can uh, uh, go through a self-checkout later and you don't need cashiers anymore. No more need. Okay, maybe now you think, ah, okay, low skill job, I'm safe. I've got a real uh, education. Huh? We're pretty smart over here. Sure. So, for example, you studied for years to become a doctor. I've got a daughter who's studying medicine, and it takes six years just to get uh, the master's degree, and then you have to specialize on something. So maybe you specialize on, on radiology. Well, if you use IBM's Watson to uh, um, diagnose mammograms, um, it's, it's, the system is better than a human, and a lot cheaper. So, why need a radiologist anymore? Again, sure, it's laborious work. It's it's a lot. Of, it's a high volume. Uh, look at a picture for, of a mammogram. Does she have breast cancer or not? Next picture. Next picture. Next picture. So this is something that you can automate very easily. Oh, but maybe you think, oh, I'm still safe. I've got a creative job. 
and creative jobs. You can't automate creative jobs. Huh? You are in a creative movie business, sure. Until Watson made the trailer of the movie. And if it can make a trailer, why shouldn't it make a movie? I mean, uh, all these stories of movies, they ha all have the same um, build up. The structure of a story is for, uh, for th 2000 years, I believe, it's the same. Um, I forgot the name of the guy who invented it, but it's always the same. You get an introduction of the main character, you got some, then you get a crisis at the end and it's solved. And that's a story. So you can automate that as well. Or you think, now I'm a writer. Yeah, sure. But 90% of online sports stories are just made by a computer. Because you know uh, the end score, uh, score, you know who scored the, the goals. You put a little bio of the guy or a reference to a, a, a former gig he did, and you've got an article. So, less need for creative workers. Or maybe, let's talk about world logistics. Hey, you can buy stuff in the Netherlands for $18, or you can buy them online for two. Exactly the same product. But the one comes from China, AliExpress, and the other comes from, no, 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 some web shop of a guy who thinks that he had to close his shop in the Netherlands because of revenue and people are going to buy online. Yes, they are, but they're buying online in the Netherlands or buying online in China. And I'm guilty as well, you know, I buy my stuff in China. It's, it's, it saves me money, simple. Maybe you're not scared yet. I think you should be. So why is this happening? Why are we automating everything? Why are people losing a job and going to lose a job? Well, there's a bug in capitalism. It's called com competition. The only way to compete effectively with a competitor is to, to get your margins lower. So you, you keep on getting decreasing margins. And that's been going on for when, when the, after they started the Industrial Revolution, so that's 150 years ago. Decreasing margins. And there are even got people writing books about it. The near zero margin society. And if the market puts your business under pressure to decrease margins and you have the chance to hire somebody or buy a robot that doesn't get sick and work 24 hours a day, hmm. So we live in a world with continuous increasing productivity, but still decreasing margins. And somewhere this is going to go sideways. This can't continue forever. You can't have uh, increasing productivity all the time because, well, increasing productivity is good and increasing productivity will pay for all the bills and all the innovation, etc., etc. At some point, there's just enough productivity and we have decreasing margins. So why hire people to do that if you can have it done for free? Well, maybe you think, ah, oh, this guy, you know, is into IT, what does he know? Eh? He's not an economist. I'm not an economist. I only read a couple of books. But look, look around you and look online. If you don't want to read these books, there's a tremendous stuff about this, especially if you start and you go look at post-capitalism. That's, that's, that's the word to search for. And it's not just me who's saying this. A lot of other stuff, people are, are beginning to say this. Okay, sure, also the, the Dutch TNO. Hmm? Uh, but if you read it, they don't get it. That's clear. They, they say, well, yeah, sure, we're going to lose some jobs. We're going to lose 8%, which we can handle, you know, increase percent percentage of jo uh, people, unemployed people, 8%, we can handle that. Yeah, we can, but it's not 8%. It's 8%, you write 8% if you want to um, um, publish a result to impress the guy hiring you to write a report. And to say, well, everything's going to be all right. It's not going to be all right. It started for me when I read the, the, the most left book. It's an Italian guy, it is, it's self-published, it costs you a, a, just a few euros to, to buy his PDF. And, and, well, he did a tremendous job. 
Robots are going to steal your job, but that's okay. Well, is it? I don't know. Zero margin cost society. Jeremy Rifkin wrote that one. He is, if you look online, if you look at YouTube movies, this is the guy that Barroso and other EU uh, uh, top men uh, consult on future uh, development and future policies. He is no small potato. Paul Mason, Post Capitalism, is the most complex book I've ever read in my life. It's a book that made me feel dumb. Doesn't happen very often. It happened this time. But there was no way around what he was writing. And he is the, he if I'm correct, he is head, um, uh, how you say that? Um, uh, at at, um, at an, an um, economic uh, magazine, head publisher, something like that. Well, the rise of the robots. I'm reading that now, so um, sorry for that. Uh, but again, it's just a repetition at some point of what you have already been reading, just with more examples. And the last one, Bolt.com says it's out of stock. So somehow people are really into reading this stuff. Okay, so. Increased productivity, I told you about that, you know? If you look at this margin, from after World War II, we kept on increasing our productivity. This is the productivity for the US, but it's everywhere worldwide, increased productivity. Every time you get more efficient in producing, producing stuff and, um, and selling it. Um, so if we have increased productivity, and if we have uh, a margin for every item sold, you would think, well, we would all benefit, right? Because there's more productivity, it's all sold, so they get more revenue and you pay that to your employees. Seems fair. Unless, of course, we have this thing with decreasing margins, which would mean that while the productivity increases, at some point you can't um, improve the revenue that you, you pay to your uh, employees because of the... The, the, that's just not enough money to put to, and, and well, did that happen? Yeah, it happened in 1973. So since 1973, nobody who is a normal regular employee has really gained any money simply because it isn't there. The productivity increases, margins decreases, and, the, and, and what you need to pay to your people is, well, stays the same, it flatlines. Um, is this so for everybody? Nah, not really. There's also the wealthy 1%. That's the one that uh, um, this French guy wrote about, um, Piketty. He said, well, there's a distribution of wealth in the, in the, in, in, in the world. And some talk about the wealthiest 5%. Those are the people in our villa uh, uh, neighborhood. But there's also the wealthy 1%. You know, the one with really money. And it turns out that this 1% uh, contributes to expenses in, in a society of 24%. So they're really making money go around. But at the same time, they have the money. And it seems by uh, a lot of um, uh, research that they get richer all the time, where the other 99% gets poorer. And that's us. And that's not nice. I mean, I, I, I don't mind if they're rich. I do mind if they're getting too rich and I'm getting too poor. And at some point, the French Revolution will start all over again. And in our society, we have people who are into this. They feel this. They are poor. They do feel like they're getting a worst case, and they do, and they just don't know how to do something about it. And those are the people who, who cling to the populists, like the, to the Trumps, not realizing that they're actually making the problems worse, because he will probably give more money to the rich and get it, of course, from the other half of society. So, what will happen? if almost everybody is unemployed, and this will happen in the next 30 years. Massive unemployment. What will happen? Well, there are some 
some ideas, you know, with, with uh, uh, let's, let's pay everybody a uh, 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 basis loan. I uh, don't know what that is in English. Do you know? Basic income, thanks. So, is that what we, is, are we going to pay everybody a basic income and that's it? Well, my question would be, where do we get it from? If, I mean, I can spend money, but I need to earn it some way. And with decreasing margins, and at the same time, the indust industry needs consumers to buy products, otherwise there won't be an industry. And the industry gets in a down spiral which is of course not good for the economy, which means less money in the economy. And um, if you read those books, uh, there are no easy solutions for this. You can't say, oh yeah, sure, but this is the Western world, we'll find a solution. Uh, look at China, no, China will change too. China has its own problems, there's a one, two, four problem. Eh? You've got one person uh, having a job and he has to pay for his both, both his parents in the end, and by the way, probably because, well, we're all getting more healthy, uh, they also have to pay for the grandparents as well. So he doesn't pay for himself, he also has to pay for three, uh, one, two, four, six other people. That's a problem. That's their problem. Um, so, you tell me. I don't know, I don't have the solution. If you think that I'm here telling you what the solution is, I don't. That's why I'm scared. I'm pretty smart, except my wife is doubting that at the moment, but I think I'm pretty smart. And I don't have a solution for this. I know that a lot of people think that, oh, there's an easy solution, let's use that one. Well, most of the problems we face in the world aren't easy and can't be solved with an easy problem, but 99% of the people don't have the but the, the mental skills to understand that, they think, hey, there's an easy solution, let's use that one. Let's vote for Wilders, or Trump, or Le Pen. Is this our future? When there are mass unemployment and we don't know how to, to make an economy run, and if we, buy, if we can produce products, it's all automated? So it, will it be survival of the fittest? Or is it Darwin's law? It's not the strongest species that survive, but the most intelligent, but the ones most responsive to change. Well, there's this change coming, and are we responsive enough to handle that? Are we that species? I don't know, but pretty sure there are not a lot of other species left. There's another problem, due to global warming and, 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 and the way we handle the earth, we've got a mass extinction wave going on. It's a sixth mass extinction wave going on right now. There's nothing about unemployment, this is about how we handle our planet and we suck at it. If you read these researchers, and how they can tell you in a scientific way that they're right. They are right, but it's, there's no emotion in it because it's scientifically proven. Look, it's a mass extinction rule. Hey, why? That's, they, they don't get mad, they just get scientific. <laughs> um, in the Netherlands we've got this other problem as well. Um, with an increased, um, we have this birth wave somewhere after World War II and they are getting into, um, they're getting older and they're getting very older because we're very uh, good at healthcare. So people are getting older all the time. And at some point, we don't have enough people working to pay, not currently the people working pay for uh, the benefits of the elderly. At some point, we have too much elderly and not enough people working, and by the way we are automating stuff, we have even less people working. So if you're getting old, I hope you do, maybe you shouldn't stop working very soon and keep looking around and, and 
be active because if you're going to depend on the state, I think we're in a problem. Oh, there's an extra problem, it's called global warming. And um, you've heard about it, I don't have to convince you. I just want to make sure that you understand this is serious. And why is it serious? I work at a place where they have 600 uh, scientists who are all paid by organizations worldwide to handle global warming. Yeah, let's increase the dikes. Let's um, uh, see how we can handle drought. Um, and it's not that easy again. There was a massive drought in Syria, which made farmers weren't able to farm anything because it was, there was no water. So what did they do? They went to the cities. Mass, big cities, massive. Millions of people in cities, all trying to get a job, finding money to, to pay for their family. And what happens in a big overcrowded city where everybody is desperate? Yeah, let's cling to something called faith. Huh. Where did you think IS came from? Hmm? Syria. IS, ring a bell, anybody? Read the news lately? Hmm? Okay. Um, that's only Syria. Um, global warming. Yeah, probably the first we will rise maybe two or three degrees. What are two or three degrees? You know, a little warmer, maybe some little more extreme weather patterns here, here and there. Sure, okay. But those two or three degrees will also thaw the tundra in Russia. And the tundra in Russia contains massive amounts of met methane gas. Methane gas is 28% more, um, has, has 28%, uh, 28 times more global warmth effect than CO2. So we're not going for two, no, we're going for 10 degrees. And 10 degrees is a serious problem. Positive solutions. Are there any? Are there any? Can we look at somebody and say, do you have a solution? I don't. I told you already. Okay. Um, what do you think of um, your politicians? Your deity, if you believe in somebody? Your neighbor? I don't care. Or maybe you? Why not? You're not dumb, otherwise you wouldn't be here. So maybe you have a solution? Tell me, let's, let's, let's take politicians as an example. I, I looked this up in, uh, on our online statistics website for the CBS. We've got 12,838,934 12, voters in the Netherlands. Of those, 285,000 are member of a political, political party, the rest doesn't care. Or, well, they're not a member. So, of those 2,085,851 um, party members, there are probably a quarter of them active, which means they will go to uh, gatherings of their political party, they will discuss how will we handle certain um, uh, uh, issues that we need to solve as a society. Um, so, all in all, if you make a quarter of 285,000, you get about 70,000 people who are active. And those 70,000 people, most of them have no zero, almost zero IT knowledge. You guys have IT knowledge, otherwise you wouldn't be here. And now we have this, this, this disruptive wave coming into the society, mass employment, um, uh, decreasing margins, all done by robotics and software and you are in the software business. I'm not saying you are the, the cause of it, because that's, that's not, not true. Um, it's it's the, the way the economic process works, that you need to find a solution to. Um, but we have this, this thing coming in, automation, robotics, and the elected, elected officials try to, and most of them, believe me, I've spoken to those people, believe it or not, they really want to make the Dutch, the Netherlands better. A lot of them really want to, okay, there is this one loose cannon, you know, a little blonde, but the rest wants to make the Netherlands better. I've spoken to them. 
So, but they're, they're complex problems and they have almost zero IT knowledge. So how do you respond to that? They don't know. So this, this is a call to arms. Do something, a call to arms, not to fight. I don't believe in fight, but get involved, do something, discuss, decide, act. That's the way to, to I can't solve this. Maybe one of you has the idea to solve this. Please do. Please step forward, publish, whatever, discuss, uh, become politically active, do something. I've got kids. I want those kids to have a, a good live life, even after I'm dead. And that will happen. Um, so basically, the future is whatever you make it. So make it a good one. I, I, sorry, it's, it's lame. This is a soundbite from Back to the Future 3. But it does sum up the essence of this talk. Get involved, dis discuss, decide, act, do something. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>